Welcome back. Well, few filmmakers are able to capture the highs and lows of American history like Ken Burns. From the brutality of the Civil War to the beauty of our national parks, his films tell the complicated story of our nation, and his latest is no exception. The American Buffalo highlights how the buffalo were brought to and back from the brink of extinction and the devastating effect that had on the native people of this land. Most people believed the continent's most magnificent creature was about to disappear forever. During the same time, Native Americans had been dispossessed of most of their homelands, confined to reservations, and deprived of an animal that had fed their bodies and nourished their spirits for untold generations. Ken, good morning. Good morning, you know, you're just one of my favorites, and I only you say, I, I had this idea for, oh, just 30 years, yeah. but now was the time. You really have had this thought to do something about the buffalo for a long time. Why, and why now? So Dayton Duncan, our writer, and Julie Dunphy, the co-producer, and I have been thinking about it since we did a film on the West, and we realized that waiting this 30 plus years has been good. I hope we're better filmmakers. There's new scholarship, but we could also do a biography of an animal to complement some of the other biographies, and this time talk about the extraordinary relationship between the buffalo and Native Americans for 10,000 years that gets broken when in a spasm of killing for industrial reasons, the leather hides were good to run the belts of the machines of the Industrial Revolution. We took this buffalo that originally numbered in the tens of millions down to under a thousand, most were in zoos, we couldn't find it. It's the largest slaughter of wildlife in the history of the world. It's on our watch. And then people woke up and on our watch, working with native peoples, we brought this animal back from the brink of extinction and it is no longer in danger. So it's kind of a, a parable of de-extinction, but you have to actually register the complexity mm. of what we did, not just to the buffalo, but how it's how it affected Native American Well, lives. it's a parallel story. It's not just the buffalo no. story. It is also the story of the indigenous people of this country. So they used everything. They used from the tail to the snout. They even used the snort the native their rituals, people, the yes. native people, dozens of tribes. The buffalo is at the center. So you can imagine what if all of a sudden all of our grocery stores and all of our churches and temples and mosques were taken away, just gone. So they lost the thing that had sustained them physically, but more importantly, in a way, the thing that had sustained them spiritually, the center of their creation stories. And so we're in a big job of repair right now. The buffalo are resilient, native peoples are resilient, and Americans woke up and said, you know what? We cannot kill this thing that is now kind of a symbol of us, right? We put the buffalo nickel with the Indian on the front and the buffalo on the tail. We're beginning to romanticize and fetishize something that we've spent a, dec a, a century trying to destroy. And well, so this is the story of how we come back from the brink. And you come back from the brink, and it's a complex story because how the buffalo were brought back from the brink. And, I mean, they used to be so numerous. I mean, there are songs written about yes. it, the buffalo Romans and legions, down to about a 1,000 and now back. But the story of some of the heroes of that, well, their stories are complex as well. Yeah, I mean, some people save the buffalo, a lot of Native Americans, obviously, for the right reason, a lot of Americans for the right reason, but also... A lot of people did it for the wrong reasons. They were nationalists, they were about white supremacy, they are about the total subjugation of the thing. The thing is, we felt that maybe this is just the first two acts, the two episodes of a three-act play. We've saved the buffalo in zoos and in corrals. There's 380,000. They're not in danger of going extinct. Now do we have the will and the courage, working with native tribes, over 80 of them have herds, to create a space where they could be wild and free. Mm. And that's, that, that is the challenge for the future. The third act that's going to be written by us, uh, anyone in the sound of my voice, and by our children and our children's children. Well, Ken, I just want to also say that for you, this is like a mini viewing because it's only four hours long. It's only long. four hours. I mean, look, the average, let's just say that Ken, over your many, many years as a documentarian, we started adding up the numbers. I yeah, think if you look at it, nearly 40 films, it's 250 yeah, hours. It's two weeks if you don't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a cartoon that we had that shows way back in the 90s that shows um, this couple sitting on a couch and saying, coming soon to PBS, OJ, a 2,575-hour <laughs> documentary. And the couple are going, Ken Burns has to be stopped. Oh, but then, but never will he be, we hope. <laughs> Ken, always good to have you here. You always open our eyes. The American Buffalo premieres on PBS on October 16th. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.